Hello, hello. Welcome back. I'm Adam Thompson. This is ECG Case 18. I just want to take a second and say happy EMS week to all my fellow EMSers out there. This channel is not just for EMS. It is pre-hospital emergency and critical care medicine. Uh, but it is EMS week and that's where I work. So happy EMS week, uh, fellow EMSers. Let's get started. Take a look at this case. Uh, this ECG, is, it's a 60-year-old male who's had a syncopal episode. We do EKGs on all syncopes, right? Um, and this guy was walking into dialysis, and that's a big clue, obviously, for this case, but he was walking into the dialysis center, um, so he has yet to be dialysized, as we would say, um, and we know these patients that, you know, that undergo dialysis, they have a lot of problems, especially if they don't get dialysis. A lot of times they'll have issues during dialysis or just after, they'll have a syncopal episode, but sometimes before they get dialysis, they have some very, very serious issues, all right? And... He states he's been feeling funny, but he doesn't really provide a whole lot of information to the EMS crew. So let's take a look at the tracing. Okay, um, I posted this on the Paramedicine 101 Facebook site, and I think almost everybody got it right off the bat. Uh, but we're going to take a look at it anyways, because that's what I do. All right, if you, if you take a look at this EKG, the first thing you're going to want to look at is the rate and the rhythm. All right, let's not skip that. You want to look at the rate and the rhythm. All right, you may notice that... Uh, you don't see P waves before the QRS complexes, okay? You're not seeing P waves before the QRS complexes, which, you know, can be concerning. So there's a few things in a differential that I want you to consider when you don't see P waves. No Ps, okay? So your differential, uh, first thing you should consider is, a, is it a ventricular rhythm, okay? Is it a ventricular rhythm, all right? That should be very concerning on the top of your list. Uh, when we look back at that EKG, you'll see that it's narrow, so it's not a ventricular arrhythmia. All right. The other thing I want you to think is AV blocks. Okay, AV blocks. Okay. The other thing I want you to think of is junctional rhythms. Junctional rhythms. Okay. And obvi obviously, I'm not mentioning it, but uh, AFib. Okay. You got you got to think AFib if you don't see any defined P waves. All right. And maybe hyperkalemia. Usually the more severe hyperkalemia will cause, here, let's put that K there. Usually the most severe hyperkalemias will cause you uh, to lose the P waves. Okay, so taking a look again at this, uh, this rhythm, all right, I do see the P waves. They're just not before the QRS, or at least I believe I see P waves. Um, so whenever you don't see a P, I want you to look at the T, and, and, and you got to look for P waves and the hidden T waves. But these are just before the T wave, I believe, in that ST segment. Do you see that little positive blip? Okay, and you only really see it in AVF, maybe a little bit in lead two. Oh, maybe a little bit in lead two as well. Okay, in AVF. All right. Um, and that just lets you know that it's retrograde, all right? It's in the same spot after every uh, QRS complex, so we're not thinking a complete heart block or anything like that. And it's way too long of a PR interval for it to be. In fact, the T wave is in between the P wave and the QRS complex, so you're really not going to say that that's a first degree AV block, are you? Um, so I would probably chalk it up as a junctional rhythm because it is a narrow QRS complex. The rate, okay, fits with what, where a junctional rhythm can be at. It's pretty regular, and you, you don't have any fibrillatory wave. Not that you have to have a fibrillatory wave with AFib, but I'm not thinking this is AFib just by the looks of it. It's pretty regular. All right, so I would call this a junctional rhythm, and, and that's, you know, a, a fair assumption if most of you thought that's what this was. Not really many of you uh, even commented on the rhythm itself. All right, so these, you're going to look at the rate in the rhythm, and we've already identified that. Then you want to look at the axis, the QRS axis first, all right? So we're going to look at the frontal plane, and you do see that lead one is biphasic, but two and three are both positive. AVF is also positive. AVL is negative, as it often is. AVR is negative, as it should be. Um, if if lead one is biphasic, okay, you got to think lead one. Let's let's just do this real quick, okay? Lead one has its positive electrode over here, negative electrode over here. This is plus or minus. 180 on this side. This is zero degrees on this side. Okay. So if lead one is isoelectric, all right, and, or equiphasic, I should say, not really isoelectric, but equiphasic, meaning it's it's just as positive as, as it is negative. 
What gives you that? Think about it. What gives you that equiphasic QRS complex? Well, we know when, we're, when the mean axis is going towards a positive electrode, all right, we get an upright QRS complex. When it's going away from a positive electrode, we get a negative QRS complex, all right? And what happens is when it's going perpendicular, so we have the axis here, or I should say the uh, electrical vector, the mean electrical vector there, all right? And let's say we have the electrode over here, all right, and that's your lead. If it's going perpendicular, you will get an equal phasic QRS complex, all right? So since lead one, I shouldn't have erased it, but plus or minus 180 over here, zero over here, lead one's positive electrodes on this side, negative over here, all right? Since lead one, it goes from zero to 180, we know that the mean axis or the QRS axis is going this direction, perpendicular to it. All right, so we would quickly look at the PDF. All right, we know that there's a lead that's perpendicular to lead one, right? We have a lead that's perpendicular to lead one. That would be AVF. So we have to look at AVF because it has two sides. It has this positive side down here at 90 degrees and a negative side up here at negative 90 degrees. So it's very important that we kind of look at AVF and see if it's positive or negative. If it's positive, as it is here, it's almost completely positive, all right, hopefully I'm not moving too quickly for you guys. If I am, just pause it and rewind, all right. Since it's positive, I have to keep drawing this here, negative, positive, and AVF's positive electrodes down here, all right, we know that the mean vector is going that way at plus 90 degrees, all right, plus 90 degrees which is within normal limits, all right? This is the normal quadrant right here. So we could say it's a normal axis, normal QRX acid axis in the frontal plane at 90 degrees, 90 degree axis, okay? And looking at the uh, precordial leads, you should go from a mostly negative QRX complex in uh, V1 to a mostly positive QRX complex in V6. That does happen. And the transition should be between V2 and V4. And obviously V2 is mostly negative, V4 is mostly positive. So you have a normal transition or normal precordial axis. All right, moving along. All right, now intervals and, and, and all of that, we can quickly note that this is a narrow QRS complex. All right, our QT interval, it looks like it may be prolonged, but it is a slower rhythm. All right, it's a slower rhythm. So if you correct it with Bazet's formula, you just look at the QTC on the 12 week printout, um, you'd see that it's, it's a normal QT interval. PR interval, we already talked about, it's a junctional rhythm. Um, and the T waves, since we're, we're moving down the line now, we're, let's talk about the T waves. Um, these T waves look symmetrical and tall, right? If you draw a line down the middle of those T waves, you will see that they are symmetrical. They are mirrored from left to right, okay? So that's something to be concerned about because normal T waves are never symmetrical or it is not normal physiology to have symmetrical T waves. So it, it should concern you. You need to think about the possible causes of that. All right, moving along, we don't really see any ST elevation or depression. We do have some T wave inversion in AVL. Uh, in, in V1, you will often have T wave inversion, so don't, that shouldn't concern you too much. Uh, but this is kind of inappropriate T wave inversion in V2. But again, uh, V2 often has uh, a myriad of things that can happen. <clears throat> so we're gonna chalk that off. Uh, on the list of abnormalities on the CKG. And let's go back to talking about these T waves, these uh, tall symmetrical T waves. The fact that they're tall and symmetrical should concern you, but they are narrow, okay? These T waves are very narrow. And I've spoken about this before. Whenever you see a tall symmetrical T wave, you need to think a couple things. Is it a hyperacute T wave, which usually happens early on in a myocardial infarction? and will eventually become a STEMI, or often does, or is it a hyperkalemic T wave? Okay, a hyperkalemic T wave is peaked, it's tall, and it's narrow, okay? You see how sharp these T waves are? You don't wanna to touch the top of those because you might prick your fingers, okay? Uh, these T waves are very narrow, they're tall, and they're symmetrical, and they are very indicative of hyperkalemia. This patient does fit hyperkalemia because he was walking into the dialysis center, he has not had dialysis yet. Who knows when the last time he did get dialysis. So his potassium levels are elevated, and that can lead to a lethal arrhythmia, all right? This 
Okay, the, what you need to worry about when, hyper, when you have a hyperkalemic pa patient, you keep monitoring them, keep looking at the monitor. If you st start to see these T waves uh, become taller, or the QRS widen, or you get a straight line from the bottom of the S wave up to the top of that T wave, that's called a sine wave, or you get a sine wave pattern that looks a lot like a ventricular arrhythmia, okay? These patients are at high likelihood of having uh, severe bradycardias, and when I say severe, I mean severe as in it's a severe illness. Not just that the rate's very low, but these patients could have an implanted pacemaker, but with hyperkalemia, it doesn't matter if they have an implanted pacemaker. Those, that pacemaker could keep firing, the lead wire for that pacemaker could be in the ventricle right where it belongs, and it will not capture it. It happens all the time where these patients get into severe hyperkalemia, and their pacemaker stops capturing, okay? In fact, I've talked about a, a, a case that has happened before uh, here that I reviewed, and uh, I posted it where the, the patient had a pacer spikes going throughout the monitor, but would not get capture uh, from that paced rhythm because of severe hyperkalemia. So that's what this uh, 12 lead is. Here's a, uh, another example of a hyperkalemic-like T wave. You see that it's narrow, it's symmetrical, and it's tall. Okay, whenever you see the ST segment kind of go into the T wave like this, just imagine drawing a straight line down and you will see, oops, you will see that that is actually a symmetrical T wave. Let's see if I can do that. I'm not very good at it, but it's a symmetrical T wave. Those are tall, narrow symmetrical T waves. You need to be concerned about hyperkalemia. And does it fit? You don't just say, oh, I see big T waves, it's a hyperkalemic patient. You gotta, it's gotta fit the patient, okay? Not most people get hyperkalemia. Here's an image that shows you the difference between a hyperkalemic T wave, a tall, narrow, uh, symmetrical T wave, which would be not as severe as this on the left, which is more of a sine wave-like uh, pattern, okay? So a sine wave, if you remember trigonometry, is a pattern like this, okay? And that's often what you can get with severe hyperkalemia. It looks a lot like an idioventricular rhythm or a ventricular tachycardia. Since we're on the topic of T waves, I'm going to go over a couple other T wave changes. Here's an example of a hyperacute T wave. Obviously, you have some ST elevation uh, on this EKG. But even if you didn't, if you saw what you see here in V4, you have a broad based. That's the big difference between hyperkalemia and hyperacute T waves. You have a broad based T wave that's symmetrical and tall. Okay? So you, you, this patient will probably be experiencing chest pain or shortness of breath and fit an MI type patient or ACS type patient where uh, the hyperkalemic patient, you know, they're going to feel weak, they may have uh, hypotension, uh, again, bradycardia is a very common arrhythmia, but again, hyperkalemia can mimic anything. Dr. Amo Matu calls it, calls it the syphilis of cardiology because it mimics just about everything. All right, here we have uh, just an example of what I mean by symmetrical. So across the top, you see these are asymmetrical T waves, asymmetrical across the top, all right? And on the bottom, you have symmetrical T waves. Those are symmetric. All of these are abnormal, okay? Can you identify which one is most like hyperkalemia and which ones are more hyperacute in nature? If you said that this one over here on the right is the hyperkalemic looking one, you'd be correct because it's narrow. And these two are more similar to a hyperacute like T wave. Moving along, I'm trying to move quick because it's becoming a long video. Here we have an example of De Winters T waves. De Winters appear hyperacute, they're broad based, tall and symmetrical, but you also have uh, J point depression with these tall symmetrical T waves. J point depression, this is an indication, an early indication of an impending myocardial infarction. In fact, the infarct may have even started at this point, so you need to keep monitoring this patient, take them to a PCI facility. Moving along, Wellens T waves. Now these T waves uh, can either be completely inverted or biphasic, all right? You see, it will always go up before it goes down, up and then down. That's how you know it's a Wellens T wave. You see these biphasic T waves in V3 and these very, very negative and it's inappropriately inverted in V2, inappropriate in inversion of that T wave. And you have some hyperacute looking T waves over here in the inferior leads, symmetrical broad base starting to become very tall. We have another example here of uh, Wellens, another couple examples actually. Uh, again, these go up and then down. Okay, you have, it looks like ST elevation with an inverted T wave after it. That's a Wellens looking T wave. And you have the same thing 
uh, on the next EKG, it uh, looks like ST elevation, upright T wave, and then the bottom of the T wave uh, is inverted. It's almost biphasic is what they call that. And then we have a, another example of the same thing. Uh, in fact, this was one of the ones we just looked at. Again, ST elevation, and it looks like an inverted T wave that follows it. You need to be very, very concerned about that. Early MI. Uh, and this is the original 12 lead. So all of those that I just showed you, you can tell the difference. This is ECG case 18, the narrow, tall, symmetrical T wave. It was hyperkalemia. I want to talk to you about ProMed. Go, go to promedcts.com. It is ProMed Clinical Training Solutions. It's a company that provides a whole lot of different options for uh, pre-hospital emergency and critical care medicine. Uh, contact them if you're looking for any clinical training solutions. And if you have any CG cases or if you have any questions that you'd like to ask me, send me an email at paramedicine101 at gmail.com. I love getting emails and questions and answering your guys' questions. I hope you enjoyed this ECG case. Please hit the like button, the thumbs up on the bottom of this video. Send us a comment, or leave us a comment, rather, uh, on the bottom of the video as well. Uh, tell us what you want to see, what you want to learn more about. We don't just do EKGs, so we can post videos about anything. If you need to learn something, let us know. We'll make it easy and free, okay? And keep an eye out for uh, an ECG tutorial, and 12-week tutorial, uh, that's going to be coming out very, very soon. And entirely free. I want to stress that. It's going to be entirely free for you to learn 12 lead EKGs and ECG arrhythmias. Uh, so hit us a like, subscribe to our channel. I'll see you next time.